Hello everyone and welcome back to the Liberty Homestead. It's that time of year when there's not as much to do outside in the garden as obviously it is winter now, but that doesn't mean that there isn't prep work that you could be doing. For example, all of these leaves that people are raking up and throwing away are excellent, excellent mulch and excellent additions to your compost. And toddler entertainment. <laughs> So one of the things that I like to do is start gathering my supplies for the next season nice and early because A, they're usually cheaper and B, it scratches a little bit of that gardening itch when it's dark and 40 degrees outside. Don't get me wrong, I've had a chip drop sitting on my front lawn for two weeks and just got my garlic and onions in, but it's not the same. So whether you are a new gardener or an old pro putting together a Christmas list, these things are an excellent place to start. First and foremost, now is a great time to pick up some new seed trays. Liberty Toddler totally annihilated my seed trays this past season, if you watched any of my videos. So it was time to order a replacement and I just got this kit in from Growfriend and I am super excited to try it out. So this is the actual seed tray. It feels very sturdy. Like that is some, some good thick plastic. It's actually a lot thicker than any seed tray I've used before. So it should last a pretty good long time. And of course we have the humidity dome and all of these extra goodies inside. So I don't have the best setup for grow lights and I don't have any bright windows that are toddler proof. So getting my seedlings enough light so they don't get leggy is always a problem. But this kit comes with its own LED grow lights. They have a good mix of red and blue lights on there. And it even comes with a timer that also has a dimmer switch so you can change the brightness. So fingers crossed. It's also got a heating mat so you can be sure that your seedlings are getting enough warmth and a soil testing tool, which is something that I'm actually hoping to get into this season. So I think that this is going to be a great little introduction. If you wanna check out the Grow Friend kit for yourself, I will have a link to it down in the description as well as in my Amazon shop. Next up is gardening gloves. Personally, I like leather gloves best. I feel like the nitrile or the rubber ones, like the different cloth ones and stuff, they don't offer as much protection with prickly things. I definitely still got poked with them when I had to pull up some horse nettle this past spring. So I have a random pair of leather gloves that I, I don't know from where, I think Sam's Club actually. Also, and now is a really good time to cruise your clearance sections at your local hardware stores and Walmart. And this is why, right here. I could not find BT anywhere during the summer, but I just picked up a few bottles of BT, deer repellent, neem oil, and copper fungicide from Walmart for $5 each. So I will be all set for next year. You can even see it right there. Clearance, $5. This is supposed to be excellent for organic gardening. It will get rid of your hornworms, your armyworms, your pickle worms without harming pollinators. Now, and probably my favorite part, is when you would order your beautiful seed catalogs. I really like Baker Creek and Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. Theirs hasn't come in yet, so I can't show you that one. I really like Baker Creek because they will give you free seeds if you spend a certain amount of money, which is always a bonus. But I have found that not everything they have is actually heirloom. So I like to cross-reference and even price compare with Southern Exposure as every single one of their varieties has these little symbols to tell you if they're organic, heirloom from small farms or particularly suited to grow in the South. And that also helps me narrow down which varieties I want to try. Now you could just do that online, but I like to have a physical thing to hold in my hands and also the photos in Baker Creek are beautiful. I mean, look at that. It's just, I also like to paint in my free time, which right now is not really a thing, but I'm sure it will be again someday. And I really like to do still lifes of flowers and vegetables and things like that. And I mean, this just provides 
all kinds of beautiful photos that I will also be able to use for art projects. I don't have a coffee table, but I know a lot of people that use this as a coffee table book. It's also been easier for me to find seed starting mix in the late fall and winter months. I typically buy online, oh, I typically buy online either through online shops or my local hardware store anyways, as I buy organic and I've already fiddled with a couple brands to find which ones I like. I have not tried this one before, but I'm very excited because I really like their citrus and cactus mix and I also like their potting mix. The Sun Grow Black Gold line. I have had a lot of success with this and other things, so I'm excited that because it's the off season, I was actually able to get seed mix. If you make your own mix, now would also be a great time to get all of your ingredients together so you are good to go when the time is right. Some varieties of plants say to get them started eight weeks before the last frost, and in some places, that is only two months from now. As someone who doesn't like winter, it feels a lot shorter if you say it is eight to 10 weeks. Either way, that will fly by, especially if you are a parent to a busy toddler. This next one is not a must have, but I recently got myself a seed binder off of Amazon and it's actually been amazing to put all of my seed packets in one compact place instead of tossing them all in a box or basket. Also because there's been a few times that the toddler has gotten into the box and basket and then I had to pick up collard green seeds <laughs> off of the floor and that took quite some time. And uh, I've got a lot of seeds because as you can see, she thick. No more rifling through seeds in a basket or a box anymore, trying to find whatever I'm looking for. You can just flip through the pages. Very cool if you are a gardener or you are looking for a Christmas gift for a gardener. If you're doing back to eat and gardening like I am and you're not already covered in snow, now is also a good time to get a chip drop to refresh your wood chip layer if you haven't already. It doesn't need to be as thick as the first time and the sooner you do it, the better. It'll just help keep building up the soil. Also, gardening aprons make an excellent gift for yourself or your gardening loved one. I've gotten a lot of comments about mine and it's one that my neighbor made me and gave me last Christmas, but I'm sure that you can find something similar on Etsy. It has been super handy and I wear it in the yard for all kinds of different things, even when I'm not gardening. Another good idea for this time of year is a ground cover crop. There are some that you can plant in winter if you live in a warm zone or some that you can sow very early in spring. These might be things like buckwheat, for example, whose sole purpose is to grow, chop down and turn back into the soil. I am also planning on trying to replace the Bermuda grass and English ivy in my yard that is the bane of my existence and planted everywhere. And I'm hoping to do that with some clover as there is a variety for every soil type. It will crowd out other weeds and grasses and you do not have to mow it. Excellent. Also, she really thinks that it's pretty and it's also good for pollinators. Other areas I'm going to try and replace with creeping thyme for basically the same reason, as well as the fact, I guess, that it's a mosquito repellent always a good thing in the South. So I'm going to start researching the best places to source that bulk seed now. Some places even have nursery pots and planters on sale right now. So also a good thing to check out. And finally, if you don't have a sunny window, grow lights will be your friend. Now I am personally using the ones from GE that are LED grow lights, but fun fact, if it says grow light on it, it's probably going to add a bunch of money to the price that you don't necessarily need to spend. I somehow got invited into the Amazon Vine program, which means they will send me free things in exchange for a review. So I've actually been gathering a bunch of different grow lights to try out and maybe run a little experiment and show you guys. But I am told you can basically do the same thing with just plain old shop lights. They are cheaper, they should be pretty easy to install, and if you start now, then your little grow station will be all set up by spring. That is it for my little shopping list suggestion for the winter, off-season, Christmas, whatever you're going to use it for. As seems to always happen, Liberty Toddler is asking for some nap time, so we gotta go inside and have our nap time. 
but hopefully you found this list useful. As always, thanks for tuning in and happy growing. Thank you.